next time. So let's continue that. So let's look at this numer uh, this uh, multiple choice question. <coughs> so a ball at the in end of a string is being swung in a horizontal circle. What force is producing the centripetal acceleration of the ball? So when you rotate the ball in horizontal circle, there would be centripetal force or centripetal acceleration acting on the ball. So which way is the centripetal force acting and what force is, yeah. So here in this case, tension is providing the centripetal force as well as centripetal acceleration. <coughs> so what's the direction of the centripetal force or net force on the ball? And again, I think you guys already know that. The net force is always towards the center of the circle because it's the centripetal force. How about this one? <coughs> this should also be pretty straightforward after doing some numerical problems last time. So what's the answer? Mm -hmm. So tension in the string, that's right. Oops. So again, tension in the string. <coughs> so we did this problem. Okay. So let's look at this problem. So the last problem on our worksheet So a child of mass 10 kilogram rides on a Ferris wheel, which is shown in the figure. The child moves in a vertical circle of radius 10 meters at constant speed of three meters per second. Determine the force exerted by the seat on the child at the bottom of the ride. So the force that acts on the child is the normal force. So when the child is on the seat, the normal force of the seat is acting on the child. Okay, so we want to find the normal force in this case. So what's the normal force on the child during uh, the, the top part and the bottom part? So if you look at the bottom figure, you will see the two forces acting on the child. One is uh, normal force and the weight of the object, uh, of weight, weight of the child. So there are two forces acting on the child. And the normal force is the force that the seat acts on the child and it's different at different points, okay? It's different at top and bottom. So how do we know that? So we can draw a free body diagram to see the normal force or to find the expression of the normal force. So let's say uh, this is the top, okay, when the child is at the top of the Ferris wheel. And this is the free body diagram for when the child is at the bottom of the Ferris wheel. Okay. So when the child is at the top, so there is weight force, okay? And there is normal force. And in this case, because the child is rotating in this Ferris wheel in a circular track or circular path, that means there must be some kind of centripetal force keeping the child in circular motion. Okay. Whenever you have a circular motion, there is some kind of centripetal force. And in this case, 
centripetal force is pointing that way, okay, to the, towards the center. So let's call that uh, just FC, okay? FC is the centripetal force. And cent centripetal force is not a separate force, okay? It's just the resultant of all the other forces. So it's the resultant of N and W. Like uh, in, in previous examples I, sh uh, I showed you here, so in, in, the new, uh, in the multiple choice questions we saw, so here like here, the centripetal force is not a separate force, it's just the tension force, okay? Tension force is the centripetal force. Likewise, we saw last time that in this case, uh, static friction is the centripetal force. So it's just the resultant of the other forces, okay? So that means we can write uh, Newton's law here, F is equal to sum of forces is the resultant force, okay, uh, MA. So this is the resultant force. Or you can say net force. So what forces we have here, we have, uh, by the way, uh, we know that we usually define the coordinate in such a way that x, uh, the, x, the positive, x, uh, positive y or positive x is pointing towards the acceleration. So in this case, acceleration is down, centripetal acceleration is down. So we choose down to be positive and up to be negative. Okay? Again, because centripetal force is pointing down, or centripetal acceleration is pointing down, so we choose down to be negative. So, forces we have here is W. W is down, so down is positive. And then normal force, normal force is negative, which is pointing up. Okay, I can write capital here. Okay, sometimes I write capital, sometimes small. So, those are the two forces we have, okay? And those two forces, produce the net force. So here net force is centripetal force Fc. Okay. If you don't want to write a Fc, you can just write uh, mv square over r. Okay. So we want to find normal, normal force, which is the force acted on the object or the child by the seat. So normal force is this force, centripetal force, minus, uh, let's see. So if I take this one to the right, then, so I want to uh, write this in terms of N, so I can do take this to the left, so W minus FC is equal to N. So N is W minus FC, okay? That's the normal force, and that's what we want to find. Normal force is weight minus FC. Weight is, we know weight is MG. FC is, we know FC is this expression. Centripetal force is mv squared over r. So you can. What's that? Yeah, we are finding the force on the child. Oh, that's the second part. We are doing the second part. Sorry, b. This is uh, answer for b because this is uh, force on the child at the top of the ride. Okay, we are finding at the top part. So this is B. So 
So let's find this. Uh, M and M are common, so you can take M outside the parentheses and G minus V square over R. Okay, so I want you guys to do this calculation. So let's do this. Log in the numbers and see what you get. So the mass is 10 kilogram, G is 9.8, V squared is three meters per second squared, and the radius of the wheel is 10 meters. Okay, so let's do that. I don't have answer, so you need to give me an answer. Eighty-nine Newton. Okay, eighty-nine Newton. Okay, so that's at the top. Now we also need to find the force, the normal force, on the child at the bottom of the ride. So let's do that. So again, draw free body diagram. Okay, so here's the Ferris wheel. And we are finding at the bottom, so here. So there is, okay. There is weight pointing down. And this seat is exerting normal force, which is vertically up. And there is also centripetal force. Centripetal force is again not a separate force. It's the net of these two forces. Okay, so net force is the centripetal force. So Newton's law at the bottom. So let's write Newton's second law. Sum of forces is equal to MA. Here, acceleration is up, so we'll choose our coordinate with positive Y up and negative Y down because centripetal acceleration is pointing up in this case. So we have normal force up positive, weight down, weight is negative, and this is the net force, okay, so this thing is centripetal force, which is m v squared over r. So here, N is equal to M V squared over R minus W. W is MG, okay. Uh, that should be plus. So find out. This normal force at the bottom. So mass is 10. V squared is three. R ten nine point eight meters per second squared.
So what did you get? Twenty-seven. One twenty-seven. One o seven. Okay, sorry. One o seven Newton. And it makes sense, right? Because when you are in, on a ride, you feel a little bit heavier on the bottom than on the top. You see here, the child feels more normal force on the bottom than on the top. This is exactly what you feel when you are on a ride. Right? On the bottom, your body feels heavier because of this extra uh, force, extra centripetal force pointing up. <clears throat> okay, so that's number six. So now let's talk about drag force. So drag force is uh, force due to air resistance. So for example, when <clears throat> you are driving your car, when you take your hand outside the <clears throat> window, you feel force on your hand because of the <clears throat> air. That's the drag force, okay? So usually when something fall under air, it feels air resistance, drag force and that causes decrease in the acceleration due to gravity. So in, a, in case of uh, free fall, free fall means where there is no air resistance, there is uh, only gravity force acting on the object, okay? So let me just write here. So here we are talking about drag force. It is often denoted by D. Sometimes it's also denoted by FD. Okay, it is the force due to air. Okay, so that's why it's also called air resistance. And it is always pointing in the direction opposite to the motion. Yeah? If you are dropping something down, then the drag force would be pointing up. If you are uh, throwing something up, then the drag force would be pointing down. So uh, direction is always opposite to the duration of motion. Okay, so for example, if you are dropping an object down, then drag force would be up. If you throw something up, then drag force would be down. Okay. So again, I was showing you here that when there is <coughs> no drag force, object falls freely at acceleration equal to acceleration due to gravity, but when there is drag force, the acceleration is less than the acceleration due to gravity, okay? because of the drag force, there is less acceleration. So let me write that down. So during free fall, free fall means no air resistance. Acceleration is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared, actually negative 9.8 meters per second squared, but 
when there is air resistance. Acceleration is less than negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. So this drag force, it depends on how fast an object is moving. The faster object moves, greater is the drag force. Okay. So this drag force depends on speed of an object. So for example, you drop an object at the point on the verge of uh, dropping the object, or let's say just before dropping the object, the drag force would be zero, okay? So you start at this point, okay? This is the start to drop just before it falls, okay? Still at rest, so the object is still at rest. So velocity is zero. That means here, drag force is zero, okay? The force that is being acted on this object is weight. So there's weight and the drag force is zero at the highest point. And now as the object falls, the velocity increases, okay? Why velocity increases? Because there is this acceleration due to gravity pulling it down, okay? So acceleration due to gravity causes increase in velocity or speed. Okay. So as the object falls, its velocity increases. And as the velocity increases, d also increases. Okay. So d, now you have zero d here, but now you have some small d because of this increase in d, uh, increase in v, okay, d also increases. Why it increases? Because of this, okay. And it, as it falls, its, ex, its uh, velocity increases further, okay. V increases further. Why it increases further? Because of this acceleration due to gravity. And as velocity increases, d also increases, okay? Because of that. So now you have a longer drag force. And as it falls down, the, this v further increases, increases more. And then D also increases more. And this increasing increase in D continues until this D is equal to this W, okay? So when, in this case, our D drag force is equal to W. And at that point, at that point, the velocity would be maximum. It cannot further increase anymore. So V would be maximum at this point. And this velocity is called terminal velocity, okay? It's called terminal velocity, okay? It is denoted by uh, v sub t. So 
So that's the maximum velocity an object can have when it's falling um, under air resistance. So again, let me uh, once again repeat here. So initially, as it falls, initially the velocity is zero. So drag force is zero. And as the velocity increases because of this acceleration, as velocity increases, d also increases because d depends on v. As v increases further, d also increases further. And then at some point, velocity will be maximum. Okay, the velocity will be maximum when d is equal to w. Now here, acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay? So in the very beginning, you have maximum acceleration. But here, the acceleration goes down. Why acceleration goes down? Because from Newton's second law, force is ma. So you see here, force, we have two forces here. One is this W force, and we have D is ma, okay? So as this D goes up, this A goes down. Okay, weight is constant. So you see here, D is going up. So acceleration is going down, okay? And here at this point, what would be the acceleration at this point? D and W are same here. So what should be acceleration here? Hmm? Zero, exactly. So zero acceleration. So W, let's say, let's say you have weight of uh, 10 Newton, okay? So initially you have D of, let's say, two Newton. Okay, so that eight Newton gives us the acceleration. Okay. Here, 10 Newton is always same weight. Now D is increased, okay, let's say it's increased to five. Okay, so you see here, our A would be now five over M. So you see here, there's less acceleration, okay. So acceleration goes down as it falls and eventually acceleration will be zero at this point. Okay, let's see someone has a question here. <coughs> Wait, what did you say acceleration was when there is air resistance? <coughs> uh, there is no like particular naming for that, we just call it acceleration, okay? So yeah, there is no like specific name for that. We just call it acceleration. If, if it is free fall, if there is no air resistance, we call it acceleration due to gravity. But if there is a drag force, then we just call it acceleration. So D and W? W is uh, always same. Uh, I would say no, it's not related. What D depends on is the speed, how fast it is moving. Okay, so D is actually given by this formula, one over four, one over four rho A V squared. So this D depends on how fast it is moving. So this rho is uh, density of air And this A is the surface area. Okay. <clears throat> so for example, let's say uh, a person falls freely under gravity with some air. So if the person is flat, falling flat, okay, something like that. So let's say the surface area of the person is Set, uh, point 0.72 meters, meters squared. That's the surface area. And let's say the density of air is 1.2 kilogram per cubic meter. 
and let's say the mass of this person is 75 kilogram, then what would be the terminal velocity of this person? Okay, so we want to find the terminal velocity. So terminal velocity is achieved when weight is equal to drag force. Okay, that's the condition to achieve terminal velocity. That's what we saw here. Okay, so just a reminder here. So you get terminal velocity when W is equal to D or D is equal to W. So, weight is mg, okay. d is one fourth uh, rho, okay. this letter is called rho, which is Greek letter, okay. rho a velocity squared. And when the w is equal to d, then we call this v, vt, okay, terminal velocity for this particular condition. So we want to find terminal velocity. Uh, so we can rearrange this. So why don't you guys re rearrange, rearrange this in terms of VT and give me the expression. So I want you to write this equation in terms of VT. What did you? I'm not asking for a number. I'm just asking for a, for an expression in terms of. Uh huh. Okay. Uh huh. One fourth. If you have one fourth, you can put four on the top here. And then what? Rho. Okay. So that's right. So then plug in the numbers. Yeah, so you remove square and then you get square root. So four mass, one, uh, uh, 75, uh, 75 kilogram, G is 9.8, and then rho is 1.2 kilogram per meter cubed, and then area, 0.72 meters squared, okay? So if you do that calculation, you get 60, about 60 meters per second. So less the terminal velocity, safer the person would land on the floor or on the ground, okay? So you want to achieve the terminal velocity as quickly as possible when you are falling. So that's why uh, you use parachute when you uh, jump in air, okay? Because parachute helps you to achieve the terminal velocity uh, very, very quickly, okay? Before it reaches to uh, high, high speed, okay? So usually when you are using parachute, you would uh, attain um, terminal velocity of maybe like five meters per second or 10 meters per second which would be much, much safer than that one. <clears throat> so let's look at some of the questions uh, that would help you to do the quiz today. So let's look at this question. So when a 20 Newton falling object encounters five Newton of air resistance, air resistance is again drag, its acceleration of fall is less than greater than exactly G or terminated. I don't know what that means. Terminate maybe zero. 
less than, yeah, that's right. So where it's falling, in fo free fall, it's G, but because of this drag force, so it would be, acceleration would be less than G. <coughs> That's what we saw. Um, so we already talked about all these things. So let me just repeat this again. So let's see what did this C say. So as falling object gains speed, force exerted by surrounding air increases. That's what we talked. Okay, so force exerted by surrounding air means drag force. So as it falls, speed increases. With increase in speed, okay, this, is uh, this is increase in speed. Increase in speed causes the increase in drag force. That's what it is. Force of air resistance may continue to increase uh, because V continues, continually, uh, continuously increases. So that causes D to increase continuously. Okay. And this increase continues until uh, D is equal to W. Okay. That's the point where D would be maximum. And at this point, net force would be zero. Net force would be zero means now uh, D minus W would be zero. So there's no further acceleration. So here, acceleration is zero. Yeah, at that point. Velocity increases as it falls, but keep in mind that acceleration decreases, okay? Object has reached terminal velocity. So at this point, it reaches the terminal velocity. Terminal velocity is, is a, it's a constant velocity. So once it reaches terminal velocity, now the velocity won't change because there's no acceleration after this. So no acceleration means constant velocity, okay? So terminal velocity is a constant velocity. Why it's a constant velocity again? It's because there's no acceleration. So let's look at this question. If a 50, person, uh, 50 Newton person is to fall at a terminal speed, the air resistance need would be less than 50 Newton, 50 Newton, more than 50 Newton, none of the above. Terminal velocity occurs when D is equal to W. So, yeah, so, the air resistance need would be equal to weight of the person, which is 50 Newton. A sky, as a skydiver falls faster and faster through the air, what happens to the drag force? Does it increase, decrease, remain same? It increases because as the person falls, the velocity increases. Velocity increases means drag force increases. Okay. As the skydiver continues to fall faster and faster through the air, what happens to the net force? Net force is W minus D. What happens to that? So this increases as it falls. So what happens to this quantity? Right? Decreases? Yeah. So as this D increases, this decreases, right? Because if you have like 75 Newton, and let's say start to start with, you have zero, and then next we have five, and then next we have 10, you see? Uh, it's decreasing, right? So the net force is decreasing. Okay, so let's look at another one. As a skydiver continues to fall faster and faster through the air, what happens to the acceleration? Hmm? 
acceleration decreases. Yes, that's right. Acceleration decreases until it goes to zero. Okay, so that's all. So we have a couple minutes left. Do you have any questions? Why does the acceleration decreases? That's a good question. So let's see that. Anyone wants to answer that? <laughs> Why acceleration decreases? Um, whenever acceleration is zero, external velocity C equals W. So, um. so another, another way to um, explain that would be, so the acceleration is due to due to this net force, okay? Acceleration always comes from the net force, okay? So when it's falling, we know that this net force is decreasing, okay? So falling while the object falls, uh, while the object is falling, While the object is falling, V is increasing. Okay, that's the first thing. Let's do it step by step. Okay. V is increasing means D would be also increasing. Why? Because D depends on V. Okay. And D is increasing means W minus D would be decreasing. Right? Because Weight is always same. Let's say you have 75 newtons, it always remains 75. And D, when it increases, this thing decreases. And because this is decreasing, so A would also be decreasing because A comes from this net force, okay? This is the net force. And at some point, you will have W is equal to D, and at that point, it would be zero. Okay, it decreases, this keep, keep decreasing, 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 and at that point, you will have A is equal to zero. A is equal to zero means no acceleration or uh, velocity will be constant. Okay? which is called terminal velocity. Terminal velocity. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, I think uh, that would be all for this lecture. We'll start a different thing next time. Are you gonna have one after this class? Yes, I will do that right after this class, so. <coughs>